Hi, I'm Brian Hansen. I'm the research agronomist at the Langdon Research Extension Center and I'm coming to you here today virtually. Uh, we didn't have a field tour this year, but we thought I want to share a little information about what we're doing here in, in Towner County with the different trials we have. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Darren Wise for uh, letting us be on his land again this year. And uh, it's always very helpful to us in getting things in order in this spring. So we're very appreciative of that. Um, so we have uh, three different trials here this year. We have uh, our regular hard red spring wheat variety trial, and then we do some work with Syngenta. So we have an advanced trial with those with them on hard red spring wheat. And something else we have this year is a, a fava bean trial, and we're working with a company called Agrolytica, who uh, was contracted by RMA to get some um, information on um, the, what should I say, uh, crop insurance for fava beans. Fava beans have had a little more interest in the last couple of years, and uh, maybe not so much this year, but the past two years. And there's been some fields growing around, so they want to get a little more uh, insurance or information for crop insurance. And just briefly a little bit about the fava bean, if you don't know too much about it, it's a legume crop. It's generally more adapted to the cooler regions. So here in northern North Dakota, a little cooler uh, environment generally, a little more moisture, and that's uh, more like what the fava bean would like. It's, it's a little more popular up in Canada than some areas. So it's a legume crop. It you know it pods very high. It's not like a pea, a, a, a pea. So it's very easy to harvest anywhere from 10 to you know 13 inches off the ground, and it fixes about 30 percent more uh, nitrogen than the pea would. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, the plant there's kind of different. Um, categories you may be heard of as a tick bean or horse bean um, and the seeds are quite large anywhere from 400 to 600 grams per um, kernel weight so it's a very large bean compared to a pea as well. Generally if you're planting in the area you'd pick a, bee, a field like you would for a field pea you know low nitrogen. Um, you don't want to watch your carryover herbicide some and it's not a real strong competitor with with uh, weeds it comes up very slow so you want to make sure you don't have a big uh, perennial weed problem in your field. And you inoculate it uh, just like you would a pea or a soybean to get your uh, um, nitrogen for the crop. So we mentioned it does, it's a little poorer for weed control but there are some options out there that are labeled. Uh, at, at Langdon we usually use like a, a Prowl or Treflan along with Spartan and then you can come back with Varisto you can, so you can keep the field quite clean during the year. Uh, variety selection, there's a couple of varieties that are called zero tannin or, or regular and really most of the market for uh, for beans is uh, with uh, the human food market here in the states. They fractionate it or separate the protein and starch so it's used in, in pet food or, or human food so that's the main uh, sources here. And just a couple uh, agronomic things, a seeding date, you want to plant fava beans uh, quite early. Um, about the first thing you'd want to plant. Uh, they do we <coughs> well planted early. We've done research at Langdon about three, four years ago looking at planting date study and anything after about my, May 20th, um, the yields really went down fast. They take a long time to mature. If you get a cool wet fall, it, you know, they kind of linger on. So if you could plant them even uh, May 1st in that area, it'd probably be ideal situation. And we also did a seeding rate trial back then and it, kind of confirmed what others have done where you plant about four to five seeds per square foot. So five beans are quite large seeded so you actually may be planting up to three to four bushels so you really have to watch your seed size to get the correct population. Um, seeding depth we want to plant it deep two to three inches. It's a big bean so we get it under the moisture so make sure it gets some um, um, moisture to get that bean growing. Not so much for uh, insect problems, um, maybe some ligus bugs which can cause some um, crop quality issues towards the end of the season and about the only insect would be blister beetles. Blister beetles kind of clump in and you know, just fly in and feed for a while and not so much of a big deal on a big field. Be more of an issue on a plot like this where you have a small amount where they come in and do a little more harm. Uh, diseases, um, pretty much some of the things you would have with peas but it's a little more uh, resistant to root rot than you would have with your peas so a little better in that spot area. 
Probably the only foliar is a chocolate brown spot. And uh, our pathologist at Langdon has done some work with that. And you can spray that. Um, it's labeled like something like headline or something like that. We'll take it and usually spray that just around mid-July. Harvest generally uh, desiccate when about 80% of the pods are, are turning. And then you dry, try to harvest at 18 to 20% moisture. So that's about uh, what I want to share with you about fava beans today. We're standing in, in front of the Hard Red Springweed Variety Trial. Typically when we're out here and we have more people, I uh, go through each of the varieties, get a little more detailed information. But uh, virtually we don't want you to unclick us, so we're going to keep it a little shorter and keep it a little general. And you can look up some of the yield results this fall. Probably uh, <coughs> well, our yield results go on uh, our website, and then there's the NDSU Variety page where you can get the varieties from all the different crops across all the different research centers across the state. So it's quite handy that way. Um, probably the, one of the best uh, bulletins you should get is called Hard Red Spring Wheat Variety Selection Guide. And this has a lot of the information taken from all the different uh, research sites and Fargo accumulated. Um, it has all the varieties, source origin, average height that they see, we've seen across the state, straw strength, days to head, and gives some of the disease ratings such as uh, stem rust, um, tan spot, and scab. And a big one that we've seen this year all across the state is bacterial leaf streak. Uh, bacterial leaf streak, um, it's a bacterial obviously and it's not controlled by any fun fungicide. So if you fungicide your field and you had a lot of brown leaves yet, you're wondering what's going on, it's bacterial leaf streak. So the only thing you can do with that really is um, uh, resistant varieties. And there's not a lot that are really resistant to that and there's a column in here that lists some of the better ones are one from Minnesota called Boost, um, Lang MM, uh, one called Trigger from Lima Green Cereal Science and ND Vitpro would be some of the more resistant varieties. So and it, this also gives the quality um, <clears throat> so it's important for uh, our marketing on uh, the whole for NDSU in the, in the state to have good quality crop. Now the varieties that we have in here this year or at, at Langdon, we, we have 30 varieties here and a couple of them are experimental. At Langdon we have uh, 56 total varieties and 47 of them are named. So there's so many choices for you guys to pick from in, in choosing a variety. Um, <clears throat> basically if you uh, look at a variety and would look at a chart, there's kind of four different quadrants. You can have uh, a variety with a high yield and lower protein or varieties with lower yield and higher protein and that's just generally the way that uh, um, <clears throat> it responds if you have a higher yielding you generally don't get as high protein and then you have a whole group in the middle so obviously the plant breeders their objective is to try to break into that upper right quadrant where you have a little higher yield and a higher protein so that's some of the data you should look at so <clears throat> the varieties we have here again we have 47 name we have a uh, Varieties from NDSU, Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana State, and Syngenta, AgriPro, Cropland, Lima Grain Cereal Science, uh, Meridian Seed, Dynagro, uh, CHS or Allegiant, we have those at, uh, in Langdon, and then 21st Century Genetics. So we have um, about four universities and seven different com or companies. And at this point right now, Westbred does not test um, any lines with NDSU. They've chosen to just do that privately. Um, just for the NDSU lines, I guess one of the newer ones that was just released this year, it's being raised at the NDSU research centers and it'll be available for uh, um, to the local counties next year is ND Froberg. That was named after the plant breeder, Dr. Froberg. We retired about uh, 12 years ago or so. And it's a variety, kind of fall in the classes like a, a Barlow or Glen. Um, typically it's a little taller, about the same uh, range as Glen, and, uh, but for being a taller variety it does have a very good straw strength and have a little bit better yield than bulls would but won't have quite as high as protein and uh, it carries that new rust gene. I know some of the older ones we had like uh, Faller um, had <coughs> some of the rust that is in the area right now it wasn't resistant to that particular race but ND Froberg is and um, it does have some 
resistant to bacterial leaf streak. streak. And uh, <clears throat> Fusarium head blight would be similar to Elgin or Barlow. And it has uh, very good milling and baking qualities. So it's a variety we'll see. We're going to have it. We had it at Langdon the last few years, and we're going to. It's at all our research centers um, this year as well. So that's uh, kind of a quick update. We didn't give a, get into a lot of detail like I mentioned before, but uh, look for the data. So thank you very much, and have a good harvest season. Mm -hmm.